In today's Leeds news, Leo Hjelda on exit, Farka hints at Robert's permanent move, Miles appointed head of recruitment, and this week's loan watch. Hey folks, Jer here on the 6th of February, Tuesday, with your Leeds United news at The View. Hope you all had a really good week, week so far, weekend into the week. If you have, if I didn't see you yesterday, I hope you've had a really good Monday. So just that. Uh, there's a bit floating around, some updates on uh, appointments behind the scenes at the club, as well as the return of Lone Watch now that the uh, transfer window was closed. Also, just the one a week, if you do like the channel, if you like what I'm trying to do here and you want to uh, see more of this, uh, you can do so by subscribing to the channel and liking the video and sharing it around as that basically promotes the video for YouTube's algorithm and allows more people to see the video who don't currently see it. Anyway, that's that. Let's move on. Let's talk about Leo Kelde and the player who exited Leeds United uh, last month on a permanent deal to, I suppose, some sort of a online murmuring of disappointment from some fans who didn't believe he was getting the right chances in the right position, seeing him as a centre-back. Well, Leo Kelde did make his debut for Sunderland at the weekend and did make his debut as a left-back and had a very, very good game, and that should be called out. Leo Kelde was speaking with the Sunderland Echo after the game and basically talking about the comparisons between the Leeds United squad and the Sunderland squad, and he said in terms of quality, there's very little difference between the two. Hjelda said that when it comes to the differences between the two squads, its experience is the biggest difference between the two, basically talking about how Sunderland's squad is very young. What it should be said on that point is Leeds United have one of the youngest squads in the division and Leeds are currently 16 points ahead of Sunderland. So the differences in quality between the two sides might be a bit bigger than Leo reckons. Uh, Hjelda did say that he doesn't think that there are any differences in terms of quality and the biggest difference is the age, which when you go down through it, there's quite a lot of young players in the Sunderland squad, but there's a comparable amount of young players in the Leeds United squad as well. And arguably he's lost a lot of experience over the last 12 months. So there's that as well. But he did a very good debut. We'll get more into that when we get to long watch in a couple of minutes. Uh, moving on, let's talk about Daniel Farke and some uh, hints that he's made at the possibility of Conor Roberts' loan move could potentially be turned into a permanent move by the end of the season by reading into what he has been saying. Roberts joined Leeds United on deadline day just before the close of deadline day in a loan move for the remainder of the season. Roberts was a player that was in the team of the year last year in the championship and that was mentioned by Daniel Farke in his press conference yesterday. Roberts has said in his first interview is that Leeds was a club he's always wanted to play for and he has told several pros before if there was one club he could play for, he'd love to play for Leeds United. He's gotten that opportunity now. And he also talked about the possibility of that becoming a permanent move where he said he knows it's a loan move now, but this is a really good opportunity for him to impress and see what happens down the road. Daniel Farke may have hinted at something similar himself in the press conference when he con pointed out the fact not just that Conor Roberts is a good character, but he's a good age for this squad, which might mean that Farke is looking at bringing those kind of players in on a permanent basis. He's talked about lack of experience in this squad before, and someone like Conor Roberts not only brings experience to the championship, but giving his age as well, brings some life experience into the squad as well. He basically went on to say that he's got a good character, he's got a good age, and he's got an excellent approach to how he does things. He said he's come in, and he's been brilliant with the group, and he's desperate to be part of this group. He said he is a good option for us in the future, but we'll give him time to settle in. There are 17 games left in the season there, thereabouts. Um, it would be nice to see Conor Roberts come into the team at the weekend against, uh, I believe it's this weekend he can start playing again. He could have played, he can play in the FA Cup, just not tonight because he wasn't part of the original squad as well. So there's that as well. But let's see how he gets on. Um, if he does well, it's more of a case that he just doesn't fit Vincent Company's style of play, I think. I think he might fit Daniel Farkas' style quite well and could, if Leeds do go up, could move with Leeds United, which would be nice to see as well, depending on how he does. Uh, moving on to some appointments behind the scenes, and as expected and was rumoured last month, Leeds United have officially announced the appointment of Aberdeen Director of Football, Jordan Miles. Miles was linked with a move to Leeds United before the transfer window, but it was said at the time that Aberdeen would be holding on to his services until after the window as they needed him for the business that they needed to get done. Uh, Leeds have officially announced it on the club's official website now as well, and uh, Miles has held similar positions in other clubs such as West Ham, Derby, and Ipswich. He left West Ham at the end of last season to go to Aberdeen and has been headhunted by Leeds United to come back down and help Leeds United in rebuilding their recruitment setup behind the scenes as Greta Steinson continues to build a very robust looking setup behind the scenes uh, Miles as I said left West Ham where he was doing a similar role but went into a director of football role with Aberdeen and has now stepped back into an official head of recruitment role and that will be the position that he will do with Leeds going forward um, he does add another body to the increasing shake up that's going on behind the scenes and will go in with Angus Kinnear's, under Angus Kinnear's section with Greta Steinson 
and Nick Hammond as well. So that group of experts on recruitment grows. Again, there's been some very smart moves made in recruitment over the last eight months from Leeds United from the summer window and a sensible window in January. Leeds look like they're going to have a very active window in the summer if they get promoted to the Premier League. I suppose even if they don't get promoted to the Premier League, there will be some form of a, a major squad shift. There's a lot of players out of contract. A lot of players have left the club already in January that may not come back. And there is gaps in the 21 setup as well as quality gaps and would need more quality if Leeds go into the Premier Division next season. So a busy year ahead should things go according to plan for Leeds. Uh, finally today then we'll wrap up with this week's long watch and we'll get into that right now Jeremiah Mullen made his debut for Inverness in a 51 minutes under his belt in a 1-0 defeat at the hands of Queen's Park Ian Paveda was a, was a 73rd minute substitute in Sheffield Wednesday's 4-0 defeat to Huddersfield Sean McGurk made his debut for Swindon Town in their 2-1 defeat to Newport coming on as a 69 minute sub Luke Ayling had 90 minutes under his belt for Middlesbrough in their one all draw with Sunderland. Sam Greenwood in the same game played 77 minutes. Diego Llorente played 55 minutes and was taken off in a 4-0 win over Cagliari. Rasmus Christensen in that game came on in the 58 minute and it was a sub in the 4-0 win. Lewis Bate played 90 minutes for MK Dons in their defeat at the weekend but was called out for having an excellent performance. His numbers in that game were quite something else as well to, to check out. Speaking of good performances, Darko JB, 90 minutes and another impressive display for uh, Plymouth in their, in their win at the weekend against Swansea. Max Faubert was injured. He's out with a virus at the moment so didn't play for Gladbach. Brendan Aronson came on in the 75th minute as a substitute in their 2-0 loss to RB Leipzig. Jack Harrison played 90 minutes in the number 10 role for Everton and scored in their 2-2 draw with Spurs. Mark Rocca also out at the moment for Real Betis with a virus as well. There's a couple of them going around. And Leo Kjelda had 90 minutes at left back for Sunday and was called out for an excellent debut. So well done to him and well done to Lewis Bates who both and, and Darko JB who all seem to have had really strong weekends. So great for them as well. And that's going to be it for me today, folks. Massive thanks as always for sticking with me for supporting the channel and supporting the news. And I'll be back tomorrow morning with more Leeds news. Enjoy the game tonight. Fingers crossed we get through to the next round. See you then. Bye.